Hello, what is up guys? James Carter TV here for another edition of the 32 Teams in 32 Days Team Previews for the 2015 NFL season. Today we are discussing the Super Bowl champions, the 2015 New England Patriots who have had a hell of an offseason, an offseason that, quite frankly, has been, uh, I, I've never seen an offseason worse uh, from a Super Bowl winning team. Let's just put it like that. It's bad, and, and they're in trouble, but I think the Patriots will persevere, but not maybe the way you're expecting. If you're not used to how this format works, I'm going to talk about the New England Patriots strengths, then I'm going to give you their weaknesses, then I'm going to discuss the best case scenario, the worst case scenario, and then I will give you a prediction on how well they would do looking at the difficulty of their schedule. Let's start with their strengths. This is a football team that has different strengths than it, uh, than it had last year. The biggest strength to me last year and this year is quarterback. I mean, let that's first and foremost, but that quarterback in Tom Brady will not be playing 16 games. He's only going to be playing 12. So for four games, that strength for now, to me, is going to be a weakness because I don't know what to expect from Jimmy Garoppolo. And I'm sure you Patriots fans are going to tell me that Garoppolo looks great in practice and in training camp and in preseason, and that's great. What is going to happen when he plays in an NFL game, especially in the four games that he has to play? One against the Pittsburgh Steelers, another one in Buffalo, another one versus the Jaguars. That should be easy. And then the other one, I can't remember. Let me pull it up real quick. Uh, the other one being against the uh, in Dallas against the Dallas Cowboys coming off the week four bye. How is he going to go up against those defenses? Now, those defenses are actually pretty easy, except for the Bills and Jaguars. Those are the hardest defenses. But then now the problem becomes outscoring the Pittsburgh Steelers, outscoring the Dallas Cowboys. That's not an easy task because against the Patriots secondary, which I will get into in a minute, those Pittsburgh Steelers offenses and Dallas offense, they're going to put up 30. I mean, I, they're going to put up 30 points in each of those games. And then going up against the Bills defensive front is no easy task. So how will Jimmy Grappolo do against that being thrown into the fire in the NFL? You may tell me that he's great in practice, great in training camp, and that may be true and maybe he'll be great and maybe they'll win all four games. But I haven't seen it, and I need to see how he plays in the game. So that's going to be weakness for four games. But the biggest weakness to me will be the cornerbacks. And these, this was the strength. This was the strength of the New England Patriots defense last season. And now it has gone from their best asset defensively to their worst asset defensively. You had Daryl Revis, the best or second best corner in the NFL, Lining up against Brandon Browner, who has been a key part of two straight Super Bowl winning cornerback tandems when he was with Richard Sherman in Seattle and when he was with uh, Dara Rivas in, in the Super Bowl winning New England Patriots that I'm talking about right now. Now you replace them with Malcolm Butler, who did have one great play. And, but who knows what he can do. And with Logan Ryan, who has been decent at times, but now that he's being given uh, the opportunities to play on a consistent basis almost every play, how will he perform then? You also throw in Bradley Fletcher, who the Eagles got rid of for a reason. He's not very good. Um, you also have... Uh, rookie uh, Roberts, how is he going to do? I, a lot of unproven cornerbacks at this position. It's going to be interesting to see how, they, how they're able to do with one another. Uh, that's the biggest weakness. And it's a, it's a big weakness to have in today's NFL. In today's passing NFL, especially when in your division, the Miami Dolphins, who are a coming, have Jarvis Landry and have Devontae Parker uh, and have Kenny Stills that will be going up against your secondary. And now that's a problem. And maybe Malcolm Butler proves to be a really good corner. And maybe Logan Ryan develops into a really good corner. But for now, that is a big weakness. And also they have Robert McClain. So I forgot to mention him. Uh, but he's very below average. He's had his chance to perform in the NFL and he has not done a very good job. Uh, another weakness to me 
the offensive line, you have your two bookend ta uh, tackles and Sebastian Vollmer and Nate Soldier on the left side. Uh, or Nate Soldier, not Soldier. Uh, but in the inside offensive line, there are some pieces there that I don't really trust. Now, they started last year. Brian Stork and Ryan Wendell started last year, and they did okay. But I would have liked to have seen them improve upon that. They did draft some rookies for that. And maybe those rookies, hopefully those rookies, can go in and play early because I don't really trust the interior of that offensive line. But it, it's serviceable. Uh, and I'm not a big fan of the running backs. The Garrett Blunt, yes, he can play well in spurs. He can have a great game against the Indianapolis Colts, but 16 games starting in the NFL, I don't buy it. But honestly, it really doesn't matter with the New England Patriots. It really doesn't matter who they throw out at running back. They always find a way to do fine, so you can get away with that weakness. Uh, their strengths, though. Uh, again, I already talked about the quarterback, Tom Brady. Their linebacking core is a big strength. Dante Hightower, Jalen Collins, uh, Jalen Collins, excuse me, on the outside. And then Brandon Spikes and Gerard Mayo in the inside. Those are their strengths defensively. Uh, and then, obviously, their tight end, Rob Gronkowski. And the wide receivers are okay, but with Tom Brady, that combination, it turns into a strength for them. Uh, I, I really want to see how Jamie Collins develops. I mean, what an outstanding linebacker to have in coverage. If the Patriots end up back in the Super Bowl, they'll be okay knowing that Jamie Collins can guard Jimmy Graham uh, when push comes to show. Uh, but they have to get there first. Uh, replacing Vince Wilfork is going to be an interesting thing. Right now they have Alan Branch lined up there. Uh, how will he do? And they also drafted Malcolm Brown. Uh, who I liked, but he's a rookie. We'll see whether or not he can fill those shoes. Back there, you also have a big strength in Devin McCourty and Patrick Chung. Those are two guys that you can rely upon to be the back end of your defense and bail out your corners because your corners are going to need bailing out. So the best case scenario for the New England Patriots this season. Best case scenario, looking at the beginning of their schedule, which will prove to be the, the important part of the schedule. During this Tom Brady four-game suspension, this is the big part of it, okay? I think no matter what, they're losing against Pittsburgh and Dallas. I don't care how good Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh, excuse me. I don't care how good Jimmy Garoppolo is. I don't buy that he can put up thirty points against those teams uh, with uh, help of Julian Edelman and Rob Gronkowski. I don't buy that. But can he go to Buffalo and win, and can he go to Jacksonville and win? Or say it's actually in New England, so can he beat Jacksonville? He should be able to beat Jacksonville. Um, now, whether or not it can be Buffalo, it's going to be a key game because starting off 2-2 two and two versus 1-3, and three, that's a huge difference there. Um, best case scenario, though, they, I think if they can win those games in Buffalo and Jacksonville, they start off 2-2, two and two, back comes Tom Brady. You have New York, Miami, Washington, Giants, Buffalo. Win, 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 win. Maybe a loss there. Maybe, maybe they lose in New York. Um, oh, and also I forgot, at Indy, which you do have a good track record against Indy, uh, and they didn't really improve their run defense, so I'm honestly going to uh, put that as a win. I think they'll win in Indianapolis. So win, 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 win at New York Giants. That might be a loss, and then you're hosting Buffalo. I think that's a win. So that's when you start rifling off these victories. Boom, 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 boom. Then you go at Denver. That could be troublesome in Denver. You host Philly. You go to Houston. You host Tennessee. You go to New York. And you go to Miami. This is a pretty manageable schedule. Uh, how will they start to start this season? How will Jimmy Garoppolo do? How much trouble will Tom Brady find himself after the uh, first four games? That's going to be the main part of this. And how also how they do against these high powered offensive now that now high powered offenses now that their cornerbacks aren't even nearly on the same level that they were in 2014. That's something to watch. But because the manage uh, the schedule is manageable, uh, I think best case scenario the the Patriots could go 12 and four. I, I think they'll go two and two in the first uh, couple games, but then Tom Brady comes back. He's pissed. He's mad. He he can go 10 and two in the next uh, 12 games, and then boom, the Patriots are are 12 and four. They did a good job there. Look out for them in the playoffs. Once again, the first seed or near the first seed in the AFC. Worst case scenario, they they start off one and three. Brady can't win all these games, and then they go. Uh, this worst case scenario, uh, worst case, 97. I think that's as low as they could go. This is still a pretty manageable schedule for Tom Brady, who to me is still a top three quarterback in the NFL. My prediction, 
I give them 10 and 6. I, I think they start off 1 and 3. Sorry, I think you lose to Pittsburgh. I think you lose to Buffalo. I think you lose in Dallas. But then I think you start to rifle off victories. Um, I think Tom Brady goes 9 and 3 in those, in those 12 games, but that will be 10 and 6, and that will be problematic as the Miami Dolphins rise to the AFC East crown. And you can shoot me for this. You can do whatever you want for me. But this Tom Brady suspension, the, the uh, departures of Darrell Revis and Brandon Browner, that right there is enough to me. I think finally a new champion in the AFC East will be crowned. Now, with that said, I do believe that the uh, New England Patriots will still make the playoffs. I have them 10 instants. I have them as a wild card. But the AFC East Championship goes to the Miami Dolphins. And for that, I will be victimized in the comments. Bring it on. A wild card, though. This is a player that could change the shape of the 2015 season for the Patriots if he plays better than I expect him to. And that is the two corners once again in Malcolm Butler and Logan Ryan or possibly Bradley Fletcher too if he actually decides to play well uh, for the first time in years. If these cornerbacks can play better than I think they will, then the Patriots will be right back in the AFC East Championship and I'll be wrong about that. I'm not buying that, though. Maybe you are if you are. Comment down below. So thank you for watching James Carter TV. Again, I have the Patriots making the playoffs, but for the first time in years, I do not have the Patriots as the AFC East champions. And how will they do in the playoffs? You're going to have to wait for my playoff video for that information. Until next time, James Carter TV, I'm out. Peace.